Carnival Cruise Lines called Carnival Corporation. By the end of this video, we're going to become familiar with the story behind the numbers of their latest annual report. They will be part of the 2022 season. Let's dive in so that our wisdom can blossom. Income Statement Revenues more than two times higher than they were in 2020. Let's take a second though to appreciate 2021 in terms of revenue. Wow, all the employees are in this together. But this looks like traumatic for any organization. Is Carnival, and I apologize for the terrible pun, course correcting the ship in some ways? Balance sheet. Less cash, all around a slow draining of assets, but a very slow drain. More or less corresponding with an increase in long-term debt. Clinging on to its positive retained earnings. I wouldn't be surprised if they were putting this number up on the wall throughout the year, trying to make sure that this was their target and good on them for keeping it positive. Statement of cash flows. Also in line with the kind of coming together that these financial statements are describing, depreciation did not really budge even during the traumatic 2020-2021 one-two punch. That takes bravery from the management and all the employees. In conclusion of the opening move, my eye is being drawn toward this very large impairments number in 2020, yet there's still significant impairments every year since 2020. Are these impairments residual effects of the pandemic? And if so, is there any idea why it's still going on, why it's still having effects, and if this is going to be the last year where we're seeing these impairments or not? In addition, we might take a quick detour to the long-term debt just to make sure that the interest rates aren't scary, scary. A quick reminder that this company does consider itself among the largest leisure travel companies in the world. A lot of pride in what they do oozing through the financial statements, now echoing also in their description of the business. Love to see how proud they are of working here. We are finding very easily credit to the CFO's office for actually making it very clear what the impairment charges are related to. It's mostly the impairment of ships that are being sold. Why are they selling ships at a loss? Well, because the estimated sales that Carnival is modeling from what they could get if they continue to operate these ships are having to be adjusted since 2020. They're being revised downward every year. Here there is a breakdown by geographical segments. This is North America and this is Europe. Um, I'm missing some detail there, but that's the quickest way to think of it. This is only reductions in ship carrying values. And so these are the impairments. In the North America segment, a big hefty 1.4, almost 1.5 billion damage occurred in the year of the lockdowns. But that was mostly the entire effect. In Europe, however, the damage was almost a fifth back in 2020 of what it was in North America, but that fifth has replicated itself consistently. Carnival is the top of the line, the luxury cruises. There could be several ways to explain this. The CFO's office here slightly alluding to the fact that there's an energy crisis in most, most of Europe, certainly in the western side of Europe. This energy crisis both increases the cost of running ships and reduces the number of people with the desire to take an expensive cruise during an energy crisis. This is the knock-on effects, not actually related to the pandemic arguably, but certainly a consequence of the sequence of events that has been going on since worldwide lockdowns. Impairment. This is them having to redo estimates every single year. Hopefully, Carnival doesn't keep getting surprised by Europe, otherwise they might be risking a, a serious blunder in Europe, which they haven't had yet. While it looks like historically they've had equilibrium between having the exact same amount of passenger capacity in Europe as in North America, just as this report was coming out literally weeks before, they sold what looks to be a very large European ship at about a quarter of all their capacity in Europe. Hey, if you're getting more comfortable uncovering the stories behind the numbers, please like and subscribe. And so Carnival retreating from the European market, maybe not because they necessarily need to, but because after several years of having to impair their own estimates in Europe, they're very maturely recognizing that it's completely fair to retreat a little bit from the European market until their models start to work again. Might not necessarily be worth the risk to stay in a continent, in a, in a geography, where they're not proving to be very skilled at predicting the future. A quarter reduction in their capacity in Europe 
Finally, they do have a nice, nice breakdown of all their debt. I'm gonna give the highlights version. Most of the debt they've issued recently, I'm gonna highlight two rows. These convertible notes at an interest rate of 6%, this debt can be converted into shares of the company. And so there's a hidden cost that the interest rate does not capture. It's not as really as low as a 6% interest rate. The second row are these senior priority notes. These have no converting option. I'm willing to bet that they kind of balance out. This is at 10.4% interest. They elected to do two thirds paying 10 plus percent interest one third paying 6% interest roughly with some share dilution likely to occur. Interesting to see the proportions that Carnival is electing to use. They're clearly not feeling shy and they're clearly feeling like this is gonna be temporary. They're doing relatively big things, very much hanging in there despite a difficult, difficult time for the industry. As lockdowns began in March of 2020, I don't think there was a soul alive that could foresee everything that was about to be knock-on effects. However, from basically the first week, I remember people looking at the cruise industry, the luxury travel industries, and basically saying, it's no secret really that lockdowns and a global pandemic do not make people want to go on cruises. I will repeat that more than it's already probably been repeated over and over. But what shocks me is how years after this, the management of Carnival Cruise Lines is putting together an annual report that is so proud of being in this business that it almost makes me want to question why am I not working at a cruise line? Revenue collapsing doesn't matter. Profitability firmly negative doesn't matter. Now, of course, as investors, it should matter to us a little. But I would much rather have a business that is so brave. What happens if this is a temporary couple of years? How much better is the management going to be able to make decisions in time periods that aren't literally catastrophic? A genuine appeal, in my mind at least, to want to support this management now at their worst? Because I would say they're proving themselves month after month, quarter after quarter, toughen them up for the good times, a toughened, hardened management in an upswing, I would love to catch that. We're now going to call in the Sage Seeds AI to see its take. Ranking of Carnival in the 2022 season. Now remember, this channel is all about hearing the stories behind the numbers and then practicing in order to build up our intuitions. Guessing whether these stories do or do not represent value. Therefore, I recommend you try to guess whether Carnival is going to rank high or low in the season rankings. Take a moment to pause even, and if you're able to explain your reasoning to someone, that helps a lot. Do that now. Carnival Corporation ranked 528 out of 615 in value for the 2022 season, scoring in the bottom 15%. I'm now going to interpret what the Sage Seeds AI is picking up on. Despite everything that's going on, not really losing that much money. Management that feels proud kind of deserves to feel proud because they've plugged in all the holes, so to speak. All the major ones, at least. Yes, they're not profitable. Yes, they're losing cash each year, but far from a relatively bad situation. Kind of hanging on to a bit of an average financial picture, really. What catches me off guard is apparently the market price of this has been increasing, if anything. Lots of people rushing in to buy this on the quote unquote dip or on the cheap. Well, with lots of people rushing in to do that, it tends to stop being so cheap. This fairly low ranking coming almost exclusively from how high the price of this stock has gotten. Oh, weird. Thanks for watching until the end. Let me know your reaction in the comments below, then share your wisdom, share this video.